Welcome back everyone, time to do one of the, I guess, last comparisons I'm going to be doing between the newly released PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4 series, and specifically the first PlayStation 4 that ever came out. Now, I actually own the first PlayStation 4, not as soon as it came out, but it was the first PS4 console I bought, followed by the PS4 Pro, then the PS4 Slim, surprisingly. And what I can tell you is, is that the PlayStation 4, for the time that it came out, was a very good console, and I always liked it. It really wasn't, I mean, I don't know, I like portable consoles and mobile gaming a lot more but the playstation 4 the xbox one those are some really awesome consoles and what i can tell you is is that every single time the first generation of that console comes out it's always sometimes the best one to pick up mostly because the next generation of the consoles you know the playstation 4 slim and the ps4 pro aren't going to be coming out for you know the next couple of years we've seen this with the ps3s as well but there's sometimes not that many crazy differences and sometimes getting the first one for you know the duration of time that you're going to be using it might just be a better deal than waiting for the next generation of console to come out or the you know successor we saw with the ps3 slim and the ps3 super slim that's you know the list goes on and on ps2 slim as well but looking at the playstation 5 this is a crazy good console and if you can get your hands on it use the digital one or the disc one i would 100 go for it it's a crazy good console has a lot of capability behind it it's not perfect and yeah maybe if you wait like a year or three years for the next you know successor the playstation 5 slim or something to come out maybe it'll fix a couple things here maybe it'll be like a ps5 pro and then it'll be faster but i want to note one thing and this is kind of crazy but how many times do we look at the playstation 4 slim or the playstation 4 pro you know and we look at it and we're going to be like, oh yeah, the PS4 Pro is a way better version of the PS4. Pick up the PS4 Pro right now. I don't really think people see that, especially when you go back to the PS3s. How many people look at the PS3 Super Slim and they're like, wow, the PS3 Super Slim was so much better than the original PlayStation 3. If anything, it's like the opposite. A lot of people say the original PlayStation 3 was the best. And I think in this case, the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4 were both such monumental changes, I think at that time, the PlayStation 5 more so. But that's still a really cool capability and a really cool I guess similarity between them that the people who picked up the PlayStation 4 most probably are still using that original console these many years later I mean that thing came out I think seven years ago whatever the PlayStation 5 is going to have that same type of life cycle so I will tell you there's a lot of differences between them but the similarity is is that they were the first generations of both consoles and I will tell you it's almost always the best to get the first generation and then kind of see you know what happens there from my experience I could be wrong I'm not that big of a gamer but from what I've seen that seems to be the case now everything is better on the PlayStation 5. Whether you get the digital or the disc, the port selection is better. On the original PlayStation 4, you're getting a USB port on the front, you're getting two USB ports on the back, the HDMI port, AC adapter, and pretty much all that standard stuff that usually comes with the PlayStation 4. And the build quality of it is actually really good. I'll be completely honest. I really like that build quality of the PlayStation 4. I always have, and I pretty much will always love it. And I've always, even with the Xbox One, I found that to be pretty good too. But with the PlayStation 5, it does take it to another level. With the PlayStation 5, on the front itself, you're getting the USB Type-A port, which is cool, but you're getting that USB Type-C port, which in my opinion is a future, th I mean, that, that ended up itself you know makes me so happy about the future of consoles usb type c is the future and i'm so glad sony put it into their console fortunately microsoft only put on the controller they did not put it on the physical console itself but with the playstation 5 we do have that capability which is amazing in my opinion and then we make our way to the back we have another two usb ports we have the ac adapter hdmi cord the standard stuff throughout and i can definitely tell you you can see that both consoles look very different i think the playstation 4 console kind of looks more expected and a little bit more easier to understand like if you put that on a desk or a shelf or something it's not really going to draw that much attention and I think that's one reason why a lot of people kind of didn't like the PlayStation 5 when it first came out the design just really stood out it looks a lot like an art piece in a way and I love how the PlayStation 5 looks the first time that I saw it I was actually really surprised that Sony was going to take this big of a chance we saw with the Xbox Series S and X, that wasn't as much of a statement, in my opinion, as the PlayStation 5 series. The PS5 looked really good. I love the digital model. I really wish they made the disc model without like the protruding thing, but it's okay, whatever. But the internals of both are the same. The disc one just has a disc. The, you know, the digital one doesn't have one. But in terms of the outside, I love the model of the PlayStation 5, and they really separated it from the previous generation. And 
for 10 years from now, when we look at the PlayStation 6 and the PlayStation 6 Slim or whatever, we're going to look at the PS5 and we'll be able to probably tell those many differences between these two consoles, just like how we could tell the difference between a PS3 Super Slim and a PlayStation 4. The same thing's going to happen, obviously, the PS4 Pro and the PS5, and then eventually with the PS5 Pro and the PS6. So that's definitely a super crazy and important thing to keep in mind. Now, internally, pretty much the PlayStation 5 is a much much faster console than the original PlayStation 4. You're getting 8 cores in both of them, but the cores are clocked much higher on the PlayStation 5. On the PlayStation 4, they were at 1.6 GHz. The PlayStation 5 is at 3.5 GHz. Now, even if those numbers are a little off, what I can tell you is, is that the PlayStation 5 is going to be the fastest console between these for sure. Even comparing the PS4 Pro to the PS5, it's going to be a much faster console, 100%. But that's not even the biggest difference. In my opinion, the biggest difference is probably in terms of the hard drive to the SSD. I kind of said the RAM was bigger in my opinion, but I feel like these two are kind of the same. On the PlayStation 4, you either could get a 500 gigabyte hard drive or a one terabyte hard drive. On the PlayStation 5, you only get that one 825 gigabyte SSD, but that's the SSD built into that console. So what does this mean? Your load times are going to be faster. Your write times are going to be faster. You're going to be spending less times in, you know, waiting rooms in terms of the loading screens. Now, if you're playing online and you're playing Fortnite or something, obviously it's, you know, pretty much dependent on the network and how many people are playing that game. But if you're playing like Halo or Call of Duty or something like that and you're not playing online, the load times and everything are going to be much faster. And that is a humongous advantage for the PlayStation 5. And that's one reason why I would probably recommend picking up a PlayStation 5 if you can get your hands on it over the PlayStation 4. Now, on top of that, you're getting twice the amount of RAM on the PlayStation 5 over the PlayStation 4. The PS4 had 8 gigabytes of RAM, the PlayStation 5 has 16 gigabytes of RAM, and that is crazy. You're getting twice the amount of RAM on the PlayStation 5 over the PlayStation 4. And that in and of itself, in my opinion, is a huge reason to pick up the PlayStation 5. I mean, you're getting such a better performing console in so many different ways. But what I will tell you though, is that it's not all fine and dandy and perfect in every single sense. The PS5 by far is a better console, but one specific version of the PlayStation 5, which is the digital version, has a big problem in my opinion, that is the lack of disc slot. Now, if you don't have any PlayStation 4 games, and if you're not planning on buying any PS4 games for the most part, then you will be perfectly fine with the PS5 digital one you're just going to have to pick up every single you know game brand new so yeah you're going to take a little bit of a cut off when it comes down to the retail price of it for $100 the $399 versus $499 but when it actually comes down to actually you know playing used games you won't have that opportunity on the PS5 digital but you'll have it on the PS5 disc and the PlayStation 4 also has a disc slot and that's a huge you know thing that I love about the PS4 you can pick up a bunch of used games in the you know used market you can just you know pick up a lot of other things on eBay and all that stuff and just play those games on the PS4 on the PS5 disc you kind of have that you know option too but the PS5 digital you don't have that so that's a pretty pretty big thing to keep in mind if you're going from PlayStation 4 to a PS5 and you don't have you know the digital version of those games then you're going to be kind of screwed because the PlayStation 5 digital you're going to have to purchase the brand new games each time even though they're backwards compatible you know you're going to have to buy the you know brand new games each time unless you bought them to this you know PlayStation store now it's still not the end all be all but another big thing to keep in mind is that currently there's a lot more PlayStation 4 games than PlayStation 5. So that's why I will probably tell most of you, you know, if you're not in a rush to pick up the PlayStation 5, then I would say like, don't even pick it up. I, you know, I would say wait until, you know, a drop comes out that you can actually go and get it. If you can't buy it for, you know, retail price, I would recommend waiting. I would not go, you know, pick up a brand new PlayStation 5 in the resale market like I did. I would recommend waiting until you actually go and, you know, have the opportunity to pick it up for retail price. And that's the thing that makes the most sense to me. It just doesn't make any sense to pick up and, you know, be in a rush to pick up a PlayStation 5 right now, mostly because the PlayStation 5 games, there's just not that many games that are, you know, specifically focused for the PlayStation 5 just now. Eventually down the line there will be. I guarantee you within the next year or two, you know, people are only going to start developing games for the PlayStation 5. But as of right now, there's still so many similar games and we see this time and time again. When the Xbox One came out and the PlayStation 4 came out, it's not like everyone just jumped straight to the Xbox One or PlayStation 4, including the game developers. It was a staggered release. There were a lot of games that were coming out, you know, for the first time, I guess, on the Xbox One, but they were still pretty much developing the same games for both consoles because 
a lot of people had both consoles. Now nobody's going to make any, you know, 360 games, you know, because those are last gen, even the PlayStation 3. Nobody's making games for those anymore. But when the PS4 came out and when the PS, you know, and when the Xbox One came out for the first couple of months, even for the first year or two, people were still developing games for both consoles, mostly because a lot of people still own both. So I wouldn't necessarily feel like you're in a rush to go pick up a PlayStation 5 right now. If a drop happens and you happen to be able to get it, 100% by all means pick it up. I'm not even telling you not to do it, but I will tell you, I would advise you to not pick it up in the resale market. You know, don't spend a thousand dollars on it. It's just a waste of money. I would recommend waiting until an official drop comes from Sony or Walmart or, or whoever else and pick it up from them. That makes it way more sense to me in my opinion. So to kind of sum up this video and answer the question, should you pick up the PlayStation 5? Should you keep your PS4? I can probably tell you going from PS4 to the PS5 is a crazy big upgrade. You're getting 8K capability, 4K 120Hz. You're getting SSD built in, twice the amount of RAM, cores are clocked higher, a new UI, a better controller. There's just The list goes on and on. It is a no-brainer. But I would advise all of you to not pick it up in the resale market. It just doesn't make any sense. And I just spent like 40 minutes talking about it again. But if you can pick it up for the brand new price, then by all means go for it. That makes way more sense to me in so many different ways. If you actually have to go and, you know, pick it up in the resale market, I would advise you from it. You're not really missing out on too much right now. There will be a time where the PlayStation 5 is the main console and nobody's going to be making games for the PS4 anymore, but that's not going to happen for at least like another two years, I think, for probably a year, but probably within the next two years, we're going to start seeing that at a major release. So that really pretty much covers it up for the most part. If you guys have any other questions, or anything let me know in the comment section below hit the like button that would mean so much but definitely hit that subscribe button every single subscriber that we get really does count so me so much if you guys can hit that also check out the other links down in the description as well my twitter my instagram my other channels more importantly than everything else i'll every single one of you guys hopefully i'll catch you guys in the next video peace out till then